Hi, hello friends. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, we shall quickly learn few important points from the concept universe, which is given in the syllabus of GPS Tier Exam 2022. So, these points, in general, very important points, and I hope which will be useful for your GPS Tier Exam. Universe. The universe is everything around us that we sense, measure or detect. It, it includes all space and matter and energy that space contains. You know. And moving to horizon, the line at which the earth's surface and the sky appear to meet is called as horizon. Okay. The line that separates the earth from the sky, we can also say in the other form, horizon. The, sky, the line that separates the earth from the sky. And about celestial objects. What are celestial objects? Those objects like the stars, the planets, the moon, asteroids, comets, all these objects, nebulae, all this comes under celestial objects. We call them together as astronomy. The study of celestial objects and associated phenomena is called as astronomy. Stars. Stars have their own light, means they emit their own light. And sun is also one among the stars. The sun is the closest star which is at the center of the solar system. Okay. Years back, when the present solar system, the arrangement was studied and it was put in a particular order, there were different theories, different explanations for this system. Among them, there are two systems, geocentric system and heliocentric system. Let's learn about them. Geocentric system, this was put forward by a mathematician and an astro astronomer astrologist Ptolemy okay he is an Alexandrian astronomer and he formulated geocentric model of solar system in this model he says about something that considers earth as the center and this is just a model okay I have not drawn the full diagram just to explain it the earth is considered at the center and moon mercury even including sun and other planets are considered to revolve around the earth Okay, so geo means earth, hence this system is called as geocentric system. Later, Nicholas Copernicus, he formulated heliocentric system. So according to this heliocentric system, the sun is the center of our system, solar system, and other planets including the earth revolves around it. So this is the sense system which we follow right now and which is proved and which is accepted universally. Helio means sun, centric means center. So sun is at center, it means it is at the elliptical point we know in particular to say and Mercury, Venus, Mars, all the planets including earth revolves around the sun is called as heliocentric system. And moving to the next concept, constellations. Constellations are the group of stars forming recognizable shape. Okay. So actually a group of stars, massive group of stars are called as galaxy. Okay. There are million and billion of galaxies in the universe. So if you take the whole galaxy and there might be million billion of stars in the galaxy and around the stars there are planets revolving around them accordingly and so when we look at look at the sky from a planet especially from the earth so we recognize a, a group of stars which forms certain shapes okay imaginary shapes so those group of stars forming recognizable shapes are called as constellations here we have listed out few major constellations both from the northern and southern hemispheres which we can see 
from the earth they are ursa major cassiopeia orion canis major centaurus crux carina okay these are the main there are many constellation systems okay so let us learn this few important points about this constellations ursa major this constellation is also called as saptarshi saptarshi mandala sapta means seven okay it is also called as big dipper or great bear and this ursa major constellation contains seven prominent stars moves around the pole star okay and this is the largest northern constellations and this is the third largest constellation in the sky and ptolemy is the one who found this ursa major constellation okay as we are preparing for the exams now must be busy so um, i'm moving quickly with the important points only okay then cassiopeia okay cassiopeia is visible during the winter time it looks like a desert ordered letter w and this is the 25th largest constellation in the night sky and five brightest star it has again ptolemy he found this constellation and it is named after queen cassiopeia okay so the main point you have to remember about this is five brightest star and how it is it is named after a queen moving to the next constellation orion this can be seen during winter it contains around 7 to 8 bright stars it's named after a hunter orion and it is located on celestial equator and visible throughout the world there may be multiple choice questions from this concepts okay so this orion is seen visible all throughout the world the brightest star in the sky that is sirius is located close to the orion constellation so about that three brightest star if you draw an axis to pass to meet this sirius it will reach that which is close to the orion constellation okay next very important constellation canis major this is also called as great dog and located in the southern sky sirius the brightest star in the sky is in the constellation canis major okay major you remember and sirius means glowing so sirius is also called as dog star and it is all it's a binary star and the stars usually they twinkle because it is being refracted in the layers of the earth's atmosphere the light of the star is being refracted in the layers of the atmosphere that's why we look twinkling of the star okay next centaurus this is a bright constellation in the southern sky ptolemy is the one who found this and it's uh, looking like a creature half human and half horse okay and the star alpha century beta century are present here in the centaurus constellation and the centaurus constellation contain brightest globular cluster group of okay stars only globular cluster we call them brightest one crux crux it's seen in the southern sky it is cross shaped and there are four brightest star and one little bright star and this is the smallest constellation in the sky crux only 1 2 3 4 stars moving to the next constellation carina it is seen in the southern sky uh, canopus the second brightest star in the sky is found in this constellation carina this is the speciality of this actually there are many more points okay the important points only we have chosen and moving to zodiac constellations there are 12 main zodiac constellations 
zodiac constellations are those through which the sun appears to travel during the year so these are imaginary actually when we look from the sky from the earth look into the sky we see this uh, special constellations okay there are uh, 12 zodiac constellations which throughout the year the sun appears to travel again this is periodic again every year it keeps on repeating as if it's travel based on this constellations they are aries taurus gemini cancer leo virgo libra scorpio sagittarius capricorn aquarius pisces so this all we uh, we all are aware of this right we shall now recall few important points about moon the moon is the only natural satellite of our earth okay in general satellites are of two types natural satellite and artificial or man made satellite moon is the only natural satellite of the earth and so you can see a bright moon the whole disk of the moon is visible on some day that day is called as full moon day and after full moon day the 15th day we can see that the moon is not visible that day is called as new moon day and the next day after the new moon day that is 16th day we see a slight moon okay just like a curve so that is called as crescent moon on moving to the faces of the moon the various shapes of the bright part of the moon as seen during a month so this process is periodic okay full moon day the new moon day crescent again it goes to full moon day this is so this in this case we can find various shapes of the moon which we all are aware of it so that is called as faces of the moon on moving to satellite satellite is a celestial body revolving around another celestial body okay and about moon we are able to see only one face of the moon because the moon completes one full rotation on its axis in the time it takes to orbit the earth so um, as the moon revolve around the earth it rotates itself okay so the time interval taken by the moon to complete one full rotation about its own axis is equal to the time it takes to orbit the earth it is about 27 days 7 hours and 43 minutes approximately and this is called that's why we are able to see only one face of the moon we shall now move to the formation of eclipse eclipse is complete or partial obscuring of celestial body by another so in general three celestial bodies are involved here so heavenly bodies cast shadow on one another is called as eclipse so there are two types of eclipses we observe from the earth that is solar eclipse and lunar eclipse let's see about solar eclipse when the moon passes between the earth and the sun thereby obscuring the earth's view of the sun is called as solar eclipse so um, a trick to remember this is when solar eclipse occurs we are not able to see sun that you just remember from from the earth when we view look at the sun sun is not visible so it is solar eclipse eclipse is happen to the sun solar okay so it's just a rough diagram okay this diagram is not according to the exact measurement this is just to explain i have drawn so when the moon passes between the earth and the sun thereby um, there is a shadow formed of the moon on the earth so we are unable to see the sun people from this part okay and you can observe here this shaded part it is umbra and the other which is not shaded here that is called as penumbra okay on moving to lunar eclipse when the earth passes between the moon and the sun okay when the earth passes between the moon and the sun lunar eclipse occur or when the moon moves into the earth's shadow so here there is earth and the sun's light is falling on the moon and there is few part of the shadow of the earth covers the moon okay so from earth par moon is not visible to us because shadow is falling on the moon and moon little part of the moon is not visible or major part of the moon it will it depends okay so this part shadow part the dark center portion of the shadow is called as umbra outer part you can see penumbra the outer part 
of conical shadow cast by the celestial body where the light from the sun is partially blocked is called as penumbra going to important points about our solar system galileo galilei as we know he framed or he just gave the entire idea of the solar system and um we have arranged this special planets according to the particular order we could able to read and explore our solar system holds the planets in orbit around the sun and the moon in the orbit around the planets at present there are eight planets around the solar system there were nine pluto is excluded from the solar system because it was considered as a dwarf planet it did not possess the uh, characteristics of the planets on moving to the um to important um, points about the planets first we'll move to mercury meanwhile we'll check their speciality also mercury is the first planet in the solar system which is the nearest planet to the sun and it is the smallest planet okay in the solar system as i say about smallest planet it refers to the solar system only nearest planet means nearest planet in the solar system okay like that it is it takes around 87.97 earths days to revolve around the sun and this is the shortest time taken by this planet to revolve around the sun in case of earth we take around 365 days to revolve around the sun right and mercury takes shortest day and mercury on mercury we can find most craters also and greatest diurnal temperature diurnal temperature means uh, same temperature we can find the extremes two extremes maximum cold and both hot at the same day also we can experience on mercury and the important point about this is this is the nearest planet to the sun and the smallest planet in the solar system moving to venus Venus is the second planet in the solar system it is the hottest planet and brightest planet in the solar system and it is nearest planet to the earth it is also called as earth's twin because in size in mass when we compare with the earth venus is almost like earth and it is also called as morning star the brightest okay it's like a star looks like a star but it is not star it is a planet it is called as just morning star okay and it spins clockwise on its axis that is from east to west whereas all other planets in the solar system moves from west to east but this venus spins clockwise that is from east to west it spins on a day on venus is longer than a year if you want to consider one day uh, on the venus it's a longer than a year on the earth these are the special points about venus on moving to the next planet the earth okay earth is the planet which we all live on and we know the speciality of the earth okay it's the third planet of the solar system in particular order and it is the only planet which consists of life because it possesses all the characteristics properties and necessary conditions for life to exist we have already discussed about this in the previous classes and we all are well aware of that let's focus on only important points and the earth is the densest planet on the solar system which has a powerful magnetic field and the earth is called as blue planet and earth is formed over approximately 4.5 billion years ago okay moving to mars the fourth planet mars is called as red planet in the solar system it contains two moons phobos and deimos and mars covered with soil rock and dust made from iron oxide so hence this reflection of this particle makes the mars to look red and along with that it contains a thin atmosphere about 95.9% of carbon dioxide is present in the mars atmosphere hence it trap the heat rays from the sun it will not allow them to escape from the planet surface and hence all this points makes the mars to look glow hot red it looks about 2.7 percentage of nitrogen is present on the mars and it has a weak gravity mars on moving to jupiter the fifth planet in the solar system it is the biggest planet chubby planet on the solar system planet with maximum number of satellite it has okay 
and it has a big red spot also it is the heaviest planet in the solar system not only the heaviest even though it is the biggest planet it spins fast it is the fastest spinning planet on the solar system and jupiter also have few rings okay and it has a strong magnetic field about 14 times of the magnetic field as that of the earth and sometime it rains a diamond on the jupiter also okay next we shall learn about saturn saturn the sixth planet of the solar system it is the second largest planet in the solar system and it is called as beautiful planet because it forms a ring like structures about thousands of rings are around the planet and rings contains a huge gases like and not solid of okay it is huge but thin in structure and this saturn could float in water because of less density it is made up of large massive ma gases mostly it contains gases like hydrogen and helium and of uh, these rings of the saturn are made up of ice and rock pieces every year about 10 million tons of diamond rains on the saturn costliest planet okay on the uh, solar system and what makes them to rain diamond due to high compression of pressure and heat the carbon particle is compressed to form this diamond in the atmosphere okay so because of this um, beautiful rings uh, saturn is called as beautiful planet in the solar system moving to uranus we know seventh planet in the solar system it is the coldest planet about minus 224 degrees celsius it has the uh, temperature it also have rings about 27 moons are present in the uranus and uranus is the only planet whose equator is nearly at the right angle to its orbit and uranus is made up of water methane and ammonia fluids above the small rocky center and moving to the next planet neptune eighth planet in the solar system this is the farthest planet in the solar system farthest from the sun and it possesses strongest winds in the solar system and it also have the coldest condition atmosphere colder than uranus and this is the only planet in our solar system which is not visible to the naked eye which is visible only through the telescope so there may be multiple choice questions based on this small little points so we have to recall all this next this is visibility will be slight blue or greenish blue in color because it absorbs the red and infrared light by neptune's methane atmosphere hence it looks greenish blue it is called as green planet neptune and moving to few important points of comet a comet is an icy small solar system body that when passing close to the sun warms and begins to release gases a process that is called as outgassing okay and there are some many uh, plan comets are there one special comet is called as halley's comet the speciality of this is it returns to the earth after some interval of time that is called as periodic comet and its vicinity is about every 75 years it returns to the earth's visibility okay last time when the halley halley's comet was visible was in 1986 and um at next this is projected to be visible at 2061 okay next um in general comets orbit around the sun in the elliptical path like a uh, planets like all other planets and it contains few parts like nucleus a coma a dust tail and an iron tail and the majority of the uh, mass of the comet lies at the nucleus the other remaining parts of just light weight mass okay nuclear contain the most of the mass and these are um, assumed to born in the icy outer regions of the solar system comets on looking into the important points of asteroids asteroids are minor planet of the inner solar system they are of metallic or rocky bodies without atmospheres they like rocky structures asteroids are rich in minerals and water and we can find in between the orbits of mars and jupiter a belt 
number of asteroids are present in this that is called as asteroid belt a region between the orbits of the mars and jupiter is called as asteroid belt and sometime these asteroids can um, smash into one another so this causes uh, to turn as pieces of small small pieces of asteroids these small pieces of broken asteroids are called as meteoroids okay these meteors when they fall we can observe sometime shooting stars we call them no so as they fall they catch fire in the atmosphere because of friction with the gases in the atmosphere and they before reaching the earth most of the time they burn out sometime they fall on the earth also this asteroids or meteors they fall on the earth and create craters also so now let us move to few important special points okay the sun is a star we know sun possesses its own light and it's a star not the planet the smallest moon in the solar system is deimos natural satellite of course and the biggest satellite is ganymede all stars appears to move from east to west we can remember in this way sun rises in the east so it moves moves from east to west it appears okay actually they are not moving they appears to meet move from east to west the age of the sun is approximately around 5 billion years the age of the earth is approximately about 4.6 billion years isro stands for indian space research organization and our india's first launch satellite is aryabhatta dr vikram sarabhai is a person who set up isro the present chairperson of isro is s somanath at present there are about 53 operational satellites pslv stands for polar satellite launch vehicle gslv stands for geo synchronous satellite launch vehicle at recently in feb of 2022 a satellite is launched that is eos earth's observation satellite is launched so i have tried to cover up few important points related to universe so we have covered almost all the chapters which is given in the gpsc exam syllabus of physics okay and we try to help out with a um, few maths concepts and biology and chemistry also in the following classes how much ever i can help you out while taking few important points let me do so uh, play, please check out our channel playlist for the important videos which is related to your gpsc exam and tet exams also okay Thank you thank you for watching